My name is Flory Sutherland. Um, what's your personal story from your experience in the community? My personal story here is uh, my father and my co my father and my grandparents. My father is the one that uh, taught me about uh, trapping, how to survive. And I went with him a lot of times trapping. And one time he told us, um, I, I said, I'm teaching you guys now. So you'll know how to uh, go in the bush without me. He said, sometimes I'm not feeling well. So he taught us how to uh, open the traps, set it up, and take the animal out. So that's what he, that's what he did with us. So myself and my youngest brother went out sometimes without him because he was sick. That's what he taught us. And my kokum, Elizabeth, is the one that taught me a lot of stuff. Getting on the, how to get on the canoe, how to get off the canoe and go paddling. And fishnet, she taught me how to do that. She taught me how to snare, how to skin, how to scale a, a, a fish, how to cut it, how to fry it. She taught me lots of stuff, my, my cocoa men. I'm very happy for that. And my mother is the one that I, uh, I admire most because um, she taught me how to you know, clean house, how to keep clean how to uh, look after my siblings and on and um, plus uh, I have taught, I do help a lot in the community. I volunteer a lot and um, and I'm still doing that. So, and I teach here. I've been teaching for geez, over 20 years in that old day school there, Indian day school and then here. So, I love my job. I love what I do. Right, I'll be interviewing you. So, first question is, what is your name? Name is Albert Sutherland. What advice can you give youth today regarding education and preserving our culture at the same time? Uh, yeah, I think the youth, they have to stay in school, finish their high school, and then go on to college and university. That's very important for the community. There are, there are future years. And the culture try to learn that uh, culture at the same time because uh, the kids we don't I don't hear kids talk Cree or Ichikri in the community, but they just speak what they learn in school here. The, the school is trying to promote the, the Cree language. We need more of that, especially uh, and the kids need to stay in school. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. What is your name? Miriam Hukamo. Where are you from? I'm originally from Fort Albany and uh, moved to Atahualpasca. Uh, what, uh, what do you do? Well, I'm a great teacher. <laughs> I'm teaching here in Conscious Lake, First Nations. And uh, I I teach Cree, mostly syllabics. <clears throat> uh, can you share some of your personal story from your experience in the community? Yeah, I've, I've been a qualified Cree teacher for a long time now, since 95. And uh, I started teaching Cree uh, all over the reserves. Okay, what is important for the community you live in now? Important? Yes. Uh, important uh, as a Karina. Increase Cree, importance, uh, we have to bring it back before we lose it. And that's why I'm here to teach the syllabics. What advice can you give youth today regarding education and preserving culture at the same time? Um, I would encourage the, the, the students <clears throat> to try and learn their, uh, their creed. Yeah. And it's important uh, 
to pass it on generation to generation so we don't lose it. Okay. Miigwech. Miigwech. Uh, bonjour. Uh, my name is uh, Charlie Baxter Sr. the and uh, I was born in 1950, November 24, on the shores of Albany River on a trap line called Makuka Batten Lake. And, uh, our family name was Baxter. So they all raised their hands. I looked, they all raised. And, uh, and nobody said no. That's how it came to be in the community. And that's how the, the system, that's how the system was. So I became part of the community. So, and, and today, I'm still here. Okay. What's important for the community? For the community. <laughs> It's very important is uh, to know each other. We ought to respect each other, you know, have good relations and uh, understand each other, the people in the community at large. And years, for example, the school. It took a while. It took a while. Lots of red tape. And then the funny part of this, uh, in order for the community, where sisters, we have to have the right funding formula. We don't have the funding formula. Believe it or not, we were capped on our funding program for 35 years plus. It was supposed to be lifted when our new Prime Minister, Prime Minister Trudeau came in place, but I don't know if we lifted that 2% cap. I don't know if it still exists or removed. That way we're supposed to get more funding. But then again, I don't know if the cash flow formula included. So the to the first nieces. You know, it's, uh, and, uh, we have to have, uh, I guess, our own uh, development, you know, uh, we will be part uh, of the, uh, the, explore, the uh, you know, the proponents that can explore in our area, our territories, mining and all that. We have to be part of that. We have to have partnerships, joint venture or agreements in place to benefit the community. So, you know, and that, that's just the only way that all these steps being recognized and to benefit the community uh, at large, because Coast Lake is growing. It's growing. We need infrastructure. You know, we need a lot of development. We're at we're full capacity in housing here. You know, but then again, uh, the government you speak, you speak the government of your needs. The, the government imposes First Nations the definitive uh, proposal formula, FNIIP it's called, to determine your needs. And they don't fund it. It's a five year, five year plan is still, you know, you don't award it. Because it's competitive out there. The funding is competitive. These announcements they make, oh man, we're given 30 million to First Nations. You know, but that doesn't mean costly First Nations is going to get the part of that 30 million. Because it's broken down in three phases. It's right across Canada. See, that's, that's the catch 22 that other people don't realize. How, how, the, how come we didn't get approved? Well, uh, we got other people that more need than you. Well, we, we, it's our need too. We're all similar. We have similar needs. We all, we're full capacity, for instance, that I'm aware of here in our, in our neighboring uh, First Nations. They all need a lot of expansion. They need uh, water and sewer, you know, systems and, you know, infrastructure, housing, housing growth, uh, population overcrowding. Uh, I'd like to point out, in my era, my generation, we're removed from uh, from homes. 150,000 of us kids were removed from, from our homes to residence school. After we were 18, some of us students never went home. I was one of those uh, survivors, 18. I couldn't go back home. I, I was on my own. The girl went to, you're 18, you look after yourself now. 
Now, the 90,000 that all turned 18 went back to their homes to their reservations. Where did they go? They live with their parents. They have no homes. They started making fun of this. And I told the government, you're the problem. You caused that problem. You took us away. You know? We had no homes when we went back to the First Nations. We had homes when we were kids, but when we grew up as adults, we had nowhere to go. That is why there's overcrowding. The, the, you cause the problems. It's not a First Nation community. You know? And then at the same time as you make a plan, they don't honor your plan. It's got to be their plan, their structure. In order to get funding, that's uh, that is how the government is. You know, we, we bark, we bark, we bark, but somebody has to listen to that. Down the line, I hope you know, because it's constantly continuous, continuing. But you got to realize it's uh, competitive. Well, what we do is competitive. I watch it. My name is Christine Stevens. Birthplace. I'm from uh, Constance Lake. I was born here. What is important for the community? It's important that uh, that we revive our language in the community because our language is, is slowly dying. And for me, I think that's the number one important thing is to revive our language. What advice can you give youth today regarding education and preserving culture at the same time? I would say that we need you need to finish your education. It's very important to have the education you need to live in today's society and also to keep your culture along with the education you receive out there. And then, and yes, you might stumble, but it's very important you go back, get, uh, get up and go back and Try harder and you will succeed in life. Never give up. There's always a, a, a stepping block there that will help you, but never give up. You can do it. You'll be the change. I know you can do it. Like I did, I stumbled into many, many things in life, but I continue on and went over and succeed. But I like to see that in our community school, people getting educated and coming back to, to the community and help to flourish the community in the future. Uh, what is your name? Achai Kanipu with the big nutrition accounting. Today, with the cultural facility that we hope to develop in our community, that we create our own museum. Where we will, where we'll have, a, where we will uh, make our own snowshoes. We're getting more snow every year. Right? This year, lots of snow. Having snowshoes would have been awesome. Yeah. Moccasins, high tanning, moccasin making. You know. We could put those, that I'm, I'm also taking not, not a long line of our generation or your generation, but your kids, kids, you know, we got to think about them. They're not born yet. They're considering a commitment to this world. So we have to prepare for, for them also. I'm thinking about four or five generations down the road. In our culture, we talk about seven generations ahead. We plan for those children. Your great, great, great grandchildren. Those are the people we're planning for. Not us. We know what we need. We've got to plan for them. And of course, well, for us also, to regain our culture, regain our identity to keep our identity, so we, so we remain proud of who we are. 
what we are all about. The Great Spirit put us here. God put us here. God made us who we are. And And going against God is not our way, but we go with God. If God made me a native person, I want to be a native person. I want those teachings of a native person. Because if I don't accept that, to me, that's like slapping God in the face. Why did you make me this way? And my goodness, I never want to slap God in the face. Whoever wants to do that, not me. Anybody else could, but not me. I respect it. I have respect and I want to show respect. Okay.